Next up, we will see a bunch of commands. So there'll just be one command after another, starting with the date command. Uh, the date command is used to look at or to find out what the date and time is on the current system that you're looking at. And of course, if you're logged into a different a computer somewhere else on, in the world, you might just see a different date than today or a different time than today. I mean, then, then right now where you are. And we will run into these situations. So, so let's take a look at the date command. If you were to type in date at the prompt, type in D-A-T-E, hit enter, you get the current date and time. If you misspell something, like if you say data, and I'm not sure what that'll do, because let's say you meant to write date, but you misspelled it, you get something like this. It says no command data found. Did you mean dat or data? I mean dat or date. So it'll try to help you. A lot of times it's not that helpful. This is a little bit more helpful than the usual problems that you would run into if you typed in a command that the system didn't recognize. It would just normally it would just say no command data found. So then you realize, oh okay, I meant to write date. Here it is, and okay everything works okay another command that comes in handy is the who command this one is actually not particularly useful on a live CD but this will be extremely useful when we switch to using a server a common server that we will all log into so in these live CD systems if you type in who you'll just see this one user named UWRF. I just set that up as the default user. It says that you're logged in right now. These all mean that um, you actually have a whole bunch of terminals. These are called terminals. There's a whole bunch of them running in the background that are there, but we seldom ever use them. The one that we're actually using is this one. It's the very last one. Okay, so this is this PTS slash zero, that's this terminal right here. Like I said, the who command is not particularly useful just now, but hold on and listen, man, you know, bear with me. Take a look at the notes. It is useful because especially when we get to um, the point where we use a server, we will need to know who else is logged in, stuff like that. So, for example, these are the kinds of output that you might see. Okay, so read through this. I'm not going to go over all of the details right now. The who command is used in another way to find out who you are. Sometimes that's important. Sometimes you forget. You can say either who am I with the spaces, or you can omit the spaces and pretend it's just one big command. Who am I? It does the same thing, pretty much. Okay. So take a look at this from the book. Make sure you read all of this. Um, this table lists some of the options that you can use. Remember, every command has a bunch of options. You can have uh, minus Q for a quick who, or you can use minus B. But all this, a lot of these things are not going to be terribly informative. Let's just try some of them. So you can see. So the point is just that you can have commands with options. Uh, not all that useful. It tells you that there are eight users. Actually they're all the same. It's just you whoever's using the system. So this the output is not particularly enlightening but the idea is just to get used to the, the fact that every command can have uh, options. Let's try who minus h. It's not that different. Let's see. So actually, yeah, it just gives you a heading. That's all. Um, okay, let's go back. And you can try all of these different options. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. So you can have 
who with the minus h uppercase h or who with the minus minus and then spell out heading sometimes this is more uh, there are cases when you want to do this most of the time you'll use the short way of specifying options you can use minus q minus count and with the minus b let's see what we will get with the live cd Ooh, minus b hmm, okay okay i'm and most commands will have this minus minus help option what does that mean you just type in the command and minus minus help and it will give you some more information about what the command does so if you know of a command you're not exactly sure how it works this is one thing you might want to try with a command and then minus minus help okay so next up the calendar command let's try that out so typically we'll say cal and return and it'll tell you the month and the year and the it'll highlight the date it just happens to be January 2nd right now and you can say other things like Cal for the entire year 2013 it goes off the top oops so there it is you can see parts of it there so you can get the entire calendar for the year and now I'm stuck all right so you can list the entire year you can list just one month at a time by default you get the current month so you can say if you said Cal and you might want to watch out for this you might if you hit Cal and 11 you might think well what's happening you get an entire year well what it's done it's kind of hard to see I said Cal 11 what is done is listed the calendar for the year 11 AD not always that useful maybe you're interested in what day was February 1st in the year 11 AD and if you are this command will tell you a lot of information if you wanted to find out for a specific month let's say in 2013 you can do something like this 11 2013 now me the 11 doesn't mean the year 11 it means the month 11 in the year 2013 and sure enough there you are you get November 2013 okay so more than just using Cal I mean it's not that important it's gee, there's so many other things that you could uh, you could be doing the main idea is that you can have a command followed by in this case not options but arguments so this is this 11 is an argument by itself if you didn't have anything after it it would be taken as the year if you have two arguments the first one is taken as the month and the second one is taken as the year so this is what you want to get used to the fact that you can have multiple number of arguments that mean different very different things okay on our system we don't have this learn function there they are it is present on other systems but we actually our live DVD doesn't have it you can try it it won't work so you can type in learn it's just that it won't do what you uh, might expect so the book has the book uh, assumes that you the Unix system that they are talking about will have this learn command, but we don't have it. Okay. Help we do have. 
and it's a, it's about the same slightly different there are a lot of differences between the way things work in the book versus what we will have so it's kind of hard to get it it's perfect um, it'd be nice if we had a system that worked exactly like the book but unfortunately we don't have it we have to pay for some of those systems this system that we have Ubuntu is free and it's just about the most popular Linux system that's used right now okay so there are differences like you saw um, there are other ways to get help um, we don't have uh, Unix users manual here and these days it's not terribly helpful to have a Unix manual mainly we will be using the electronic man page okay so some systems will have printed manual pages we don't we don't have it okay we will use the man page so for example on their system mancal gives you this output we give we have pretty much the same thing on our Ubuntu or live CD so I'm gonna type in man cal return and it's a little different and I don't want to spend too much time on the differences I'm gonna hit Q so remember when you whenever you type in a man page you can space through the different options like this I'm gonna hit space one more time space space or you can hit Q and quit out of this and you're back to the prompt okay so you, as you can see there are quite a few differences um, I'm not gonna go over this section on correcting typing mistakes if you type in the wrong command you know what will happen alright I'm gonna stop about here and give you time to try out all those commands, see what you find.